up. All right, this might take a minute. I wanted to talk about this Meg Thee Stallion situation that's going on right now with her label. Um, and preface my comments by saying, I don't know her. I don't know any of the people involved. I am a observer to the situation, but I do have information that is accurate from sources that I, uh, say are reputable. So first and foremost, um, I'm a huge fan of Meg the Stallion. I think I, like I, I was one of the first people to start playing her records on my station on Dash um, before anybody did. Even Snoop will tell you that. Snoop Dogg was like, I heard Meg the Stallion on your radio station before I heard her on any radio station. Um, and I like that. I like Southern hip hop. I like she's a hot female rapper and I'm a big fan, right? So when I see the same old same tricks and mistakes being made by an artist, I'm going to point them out because I want to see her succeed. I want to see Meg the Stallion be the biggest stallion she can be. Right? So that's that. Now, again, my opinion is my own. Some people are going to disagree with me. Some people are going to say whatever, but those people, it's fine. You know, we all are entitled to our opinion. I'm just one person and I just speak on my page. Um, so with regards to her as an artist, I think artists need to be mindful of something that I call the 99 and the 1%, right? Factor. And that means that granted an artist is 99% of the success sometimes, right? Like they do all the heavy lifting. They're out in front of the camera. They do all the traveling. They're up late. They work hard. But there's also this 1% that artists cannot forget about. And that 1% are those little nudges or those people that are in your life that steer you in a direction or give you an opportunity that changes the entire trajectory of your life. Meaning, if it wasn't for them, there would be no you. There might be another version of you, but there would be no you. It's very similar to when Ice Cube said, when he wrote, fuck the police, he balled the rap up and threw it in the trash can. Like, nah, nah. And his homeboy was like, nah, brah, this shit is hot. You about to say this shit. That's that 1%. Those are the people in your life that, you know, change the trajectory of your life, create these opportunities for you that, you know, would, would not exist. Now, I don't know her relationship with her label or anything like that. What I do know is when she was with that label, regardless of what the contract said, her music as an artist was better. It was more grounded in her roots as a Houston artist and a Houston rapper. And we were all vibing to that. Something changed. Things were left. Right? Cool. It happens. But now that she's saying that she's unhappy with the fact that she can't release music. And I question her, you know, her decision to, to want to renegotiate. Most artists don't really get the opportunity to renegotiate till they achieve a certain level of success. Way more than the success that Megan has had. Boys to Men renegotiated, you know, their deal and things changed for them. They put an album out, sold like crazy millions of records, right? So did the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Drew Hill. And there are a lot of artists, but you got to get there first. You got to you gotta have the leverage in the game to be like, yo, let's change it up. And a lot of times, I mean, your label doesn't have a choice because at that point, you've, you've made them enough money that they're still going to be involved in the picture, but let you do your own thing. You know, the first deal is always a whack deal. Now, unless you're an artist who's going to get out here and do it on your own, spend all of your money, use all of your relationships, you know, and do it by yourself, which artists do, then yeah, you can you can do whatever the hell you want to do. But this is an investment business. Labels invest in artists, and they want a return on their investment. 
Now, granted, you have to look at it like this. You can either have 50% of $50 million or 100% of a million dollars. And that's what I'm going to say, because there's a lot of artists that I'm pretty sure they're not getting all the money they should get. You know, I'm pretty sure there's some really stellar artists that have made a lot of people a lot of money. But had they gone about it their own way, they wouldn't even be they wouldn't be the household names that we know. And secondly, understanding and really her music, I just feel like being in Hollywood, not L.A., I don't have anything against L.A. I have a problem with Hollywood because Hollywood is self-serving and it doesn't care about the authenticity or the culture. It's there for the photo ops, the money, the clout. It's not there for the culture. And that's Hollywood as a, as a culture. Um, so when I tell her to get out of Hollywood and say, Megan, you need to leave. That just means get away from all that foolishness, all that Malibu chill. That's not, that's not it. Cause I'm gonna tell you this and, 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 and listen to me carefully. Rich people have the dumbest ideas. Rich people have the dumbest ideas. They have the most money, but the decisions that they want to make are always money decisions. They're not the smart play, right, at all. And this goes to anybody who's an entrepreneur, whether you're a rapper, a designer, creator, entrepreneur, whatever. Your hungry, broke, starving, ordinary ideas are what make you rich, are what turn you into a household name. That's what turns you into the to the to the mega millionaire. It's that energy, that fire that you have when you're on the rise and you're really trying to figure this shit out. Right? It's not the you and the it's not the private jet you or the the you know red carpet you and the you know private chef mansion you. That ain't it. You got to stay hungry. You know, and you always got to you always got to keep your feet and your ears and your eyes and your energy to the ground, man. Don't ever don't ever get so into that shit that you attending parties and brunches and lunches and and shopping and all that kind of stuff. When really when it was you and a producer in a sweaty ass booth or you and your friends in the basement trying to figure out how to code this app or whatever it is you're trying to do. Remember that person and remember who was in the room. Remember who was there at that moment. That's what makes you. Those are the people that really grind it out for you and really help you become who you are. I've had people in my life like that. Everybody has had someone that is always that sauce. So I just, I'm not a big fan of ego and forgetting where you came from and forgetting about the people that got you to where you are. And I don't like it when in Hollywood, those people come in and play the divide and conquer game. Like, you know, you know, those, you know, those, you know, remember back in the day, like the boxers, he's on the rise and all of a sudden the, the Don King like care to come in and says, Hey man, you know, why don't you come with us? And then they leave their trainer and they leave their corner man and they cut man. They get a new trainer, a new, a new team and they got the money and then they get knocked the fuck out. Cause you, you left that 1%. You the 99. You're the one in there taking the blows. You're the one in there running and training every day, but you got to remember where you came from and get back to you and grounded in what the hell made you who you are. And that's it. And that goes for anybody. I'm just not with that bullshit. And if you disagree with me, I, I totally appreciate it. It's, it's fine. We we all have a right to our opinion. But that's just my take on it. So to Meg, I wish you the best. I always do. I just want you to get back to what makes you the dope-ass artist that you are. We all know you are. And hopefully this situation with your people will figure it out and work it out. 
And if you want to make some tweaks to your contract, cool. But it's a lot easier to tweak some shit when it's like, I done made y'all $10 million, $20 million. You know what I'm saying? And and somebody is, and, and you fulfill your contract and it's time to re re up on the next deal. So that's just my little piece, man. I, I hope you guys, you know, understand where I come from. My intention is good. I'm not an emotional person. I'm not malicious. I just see what I see and I say what I say. So to all you artists out there, don't forget where you came from. Stay hungry, no matter how rich you get and stay focused.